verse number 36. Acts chapter 4, verse number 36. Amen. Let me get there myself here. Acts chapter 4, verse number 36. Eventually, I'd like to get some Sunday school bulletin handouts just for the Sunday school hour. Amen. And enjoy coming, put you some news and updates on there. Amen. Donald Trump and all that good stuff. Amen. I've been keeping up with that. I don't know. He was in. He, I don't know who's uh, who's in the lead or what, but it's a fight. Amen. I'm praying that they'll just. Uh, uh, I'm praying they'll just vote a, pa a pastor somewhere, and you know, for president. You know, I was like, I need to run for president. That's what we'll do. Amen. We'll. <laughs> no, all right, man. Acts chapter 4, we're going to learn this morning uh, about an individual, and I'd like to start on Sunday, uh, Sunday for the Sunday school hour. Uh, I'd like to start with learning uh, characters in the Bible, characters uh, specifically in the New Testament. I like to study individuals uh, through the New Testament, study them, their lives, and things like that. So Acts chapter 4, verse number 36, we're going to study this morning about a man named Barnabas, a uh, favorite character of mine. Acts chapter 4, verse number 36, we're going to start there. The Bible says... And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the opportunity we get to be in the house of God. Lord, we get to learn from the Word of God this morning. May you bless us Sunday school hour. May we learn more, from, uh, Lord, about the Word of God, Lord, and may we learn more from the Word of God. Just ask that you please would speak to our hearts. Help me this morning, Holy Spirit. Would you please help me to say only what you'd have me to say. I yield myself to you. Just ask that you would bless all that's done and said. May it be for your honor and your glory. May the Lord be lifted up, and Lord, may uh, Lord our hearts be drawn closer to thee. We love you and we thank you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Barnabas is a favorite character of mine, but Barnabas is known always by his surname. Uh, his real name is actually, as you see there, Joseph, uh, or however you say that. I believe it's Joseph. I don't. Uh, it's a short e there, uh, but Barnabas is his surname uh, that he was given by the apostles. Uh, it Bar the name Barnabas means, uh, as you see there, the son of consolation. Uh, but his real name is Joseph. He was a Levite, and if you know your Bible. Uh, and, and know the Old Testament, the Levites were uh, the, the Levitical priesthood and, and all that went on there. Uh, so he was of the tribe of Levi, and he was from Cyprus. And I was trying to see about getting a map or something, but I didn't get a, uh, I didn't get a map in here. But Cyprus, if you know, it's just a small, just kind of a small island. Uh, you just kind of look, it's kind of out in, in, in the middle there. Uh, the, uh, where you know they had the Roman Empire. Roman Empire. Cyprus was just a small little area, but that's where he was from. He was of the country of Cyprus. And let me see here. What else? Uh, and then I don't know. I, you know, we don't know if he was wealthy, but the Bible says, verse thirty-seven, that he had land and that he sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Whether he was a wealthy man, we're not sure. Maybe, maybe he had land from you know, parents, or maybe he was given land by family. Not sure uh, exactly, you know, his uh, uh, social status, uh, but we know he had land, and he sold it for the Lord. Now we're going to go to Acts chapter 11, verse number 22. Acts chapter 11, verse number 22. He's mentioned uh, 28 times in the Bible. Most of it is in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 11, verse number 22, the Bible says, Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far uh, as Antioch. And so Barnabas was very heavily involved in the church. As you see, he sold, he, he sold the land that he had, gave the money to the apostles, gave the money to the church, and just started serving God. He just went all out. And wherever the church sent him, that's where he went. Here, in, uh, he went as far as Antioch, and you see kind of... What, what Barnabas would do, uh, you keep going there, verse 23, it says, Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. And so the church would apparently send Barnabas 
to places where, you know, the, that people had been saved and a church was being started. He would come and exhort the brethren. He would challenge them to cleave to the Lord. And then God gives a description of Barnabas. Uh, the Bible says that he was a good man. Amen. And you know, uh, you know, it's, it, it, when God gives a good, a, a good reputation of you in, in the Scripture, amen, and Barnabas definitely has that. He was a good man. Uh, and, and not good as, in saying that he was, um, you know, that, uh, that he was perfect, that he was still a sinner. I'm sure he still had faults, amen, but the Bible says he was a good man. And then he was full of the Holy Ghost, amen. That doesn't mean he spoke with tongues and rolled around in the aisles and healed people, you know, as far as, you know, what the, the uh, apostolics would say. Uh, no, he was full of the Holy Ghost, amen, and then and of faith. And then it says, and much people was added unto the Lord. So he was very much involved with bringing people to Christ. Amen. He added people to the Lord. He gave the gospel. He was full of the Holy Ghost. And he was all about the church, all about bringing people to Christ. And, and then you see verse 25. He was also very, uh, uh, very uh, key, uh, a key figure in the life of Paul. It says, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Saul was not very trusted when he first got saved. He, you know, uh, he persecuted the church. He was a murderer. And so he was not very trusted by the, the Christians, uh, by the church. And Barnabas was one of the key men that he went and found Saul and took him with him, took him back to Antioch, and really helped uh, people to be to trust the Christians at Antioch to trust him, and that he ha and he uh, I believe he taught Paul a lot as well as Paul taught the, the disciples with with Barnabas. But Barnabas was I believe very key in Paul's life to help him uh, in learning more about the Lord. Amen. We wouldn't really I believe know Paul today as much as we do if it weren't for a man named Barnabas to help him along and to really take Paul under his wing and trust him. Uh, he did the same for Mark. Uh, if you know uh, uh, Mark, the book of Mark, amen, John Mark, that he departed from the Lord. And Barnabas went and found Mark and brought him back to the Lord. And uh, he departed for a while and Barnabas went and found him. And so Barnabas is really all about people, all about giving his life for the Lord uh, and, and just being a key figure in the New Testament. And like I said, I don't believe that we would know Saul or Paul today as much as what he was if it weren't for a man named Barnabas that was willing to help. And willing, to, uh, and willing to teach uh, a young man named Saul. Acts 12, verse 25. We're going to go here. Acts 12, verse 25. It says, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname uh, was Mark. Again, another portion of Scripture here. But Barnabas and Saul, uh, when Barnabas uh, went and found Saul, taught him, and they were in Antioch for a, for a while. Then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit asked and that they'd set apart Barnabas and Saul for the ministry, and they began their missionary journeys. Uh, if you look, usually in the back of your Bible, a lot, lots of Bibles have maps of Barnabas and, and Paul, their missionary, the, Paul's missionary journeys. Uh, Barnabas was uh, with Paul on most of those, uh, usually, except for really the last one, then that was Paul and Silas, but Paul and Barnabas were very good friends. Uh, they, they uh, you know, as we saw there, that he had brought uh, Paul to Antioch. They, they taught the disciples there. That's where the disciples were first called Christians was there in Antioch. And all that Paul and Barnabas did, they did together. Uh, they were very, uh, just very key together. And then when the Holy Spirit uh, went to the church and asked that he'd separate Paul and Barnabas. And so they were separated together. They served together. Uh, they were uh, friends serving the Lord, amen. And, and, you know, that's what the ministry is. Usually, you know, you, you find friends, people that are of like faith and a like mind. You begin to serve God together. You build friendships with people. And you just begin to develop a love for each other as well as a love for the Lord when you're serving together, amen. And, uh, and we know that Saul also, uh, if you look there, chapter 13, verse 9, Barnabas was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then verse 9, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, set his eyes on him. And so Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. Barnabas was filled with the Holy Spirit. And you just see how that, when you, when you have your focus on the Lord, you'll have friends, you'll attract people that have the same heart and same mind. Amen. And I believe that Barnabas was an encouragement to Paul in how he ought to live the Christian life. And so we see as iron sharpeneth iron, the book of Proverbs says, 
Barnabas, I believe, sharpened Paul's desire and love for the Lord to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's how we ought to be as Christians. We, when we serve the Lord together, when we serve the Lord in whatever capacity, uh, we ought to desire to be doing more for the Lord, and we ought to challenge each other to do more for the Lord. And I believe that's what Barnabas did. He was always challenging, exhorting, and he challenged people to cleave to the Lord and, and, in, in all that he'd done. Amen. And, uh, and I really like just, just what, how Barnabas went about it, amen. And he took not only those that, like Saul, was uh, a, a murderer. He took John Mark, who just a, a little bit a lack of character. And he helped, helped them become more and it helped them in their potential for the Lord. But as we know, in anything, uh, there, there comes contention, amen. When you serve the Lord with anybody at, at any length of time, uh, there can come problems in the church. Let me find this here. I believe Acts chapter 15. See a little bit of what the Lord tells us here. Acts chapter 15 says there, uh, verse number 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, certain other of them, should go up to Jerusalem and unto the apostles about, and unto the apostles about this question. Um, and so they had some they had some contention with uh, other other workers and uh, that were telling the the people there that they had to there was you know that they had to follow the law and Paul and Barnabas had a had a little bit of a disputation with uh, another with another church there um, but what I'd really like to look at let me see here uh, well let's go also chapter 15 verse number 35. It says, And Paul, all, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Uh, and some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. At this point, they had already gone on one missionary journey, and they took John Mark with them, uh, or John, whose surname was Mark, uh, they had taken Mark with them, and he had left. He departed from them. He, uh, he quit halfway through. And Paul is not a quitter. If you know anything about Paul, he is a, he is a determined man. He was not a quitter. He gave up. Uh, and you know, and, and he gave up what he was doing. But when you notice his life before, he was very. He's a very zealous man. Uh, he's not about to quit. He's going to go go through with it. When you notice when he goes to Jerusalem, they try to tell him not to go. Paul. Uh, he he just he didn't care. I mean, Paul was just one of those one of those old fashioned, old style Baptist preachers that just didn't care uh, come what may, and he wasn't going to turn around and quit. Uh, John was not that way. Uh, John uh, or, or or Mark, uh, his surname, sorry, Mark. He was not that way. Uh, he quit about halfway through one of their missionary journeys. Why we don't know. Whether it was just too hard for him, whether uh, family, whether uh, not sure what happened. But halfway through the last missionary journey, they quit. And so Paul comes to Barnabas and says, hey, I, you know, we need to go back to those churches that we went to and we need to uh, encourage them and preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Paul wanted to make sure how the church was doing, how they were coming about. Barnabas said, I agree, but he wanted to take John Mark with them. And Paul did not agree. Paul did not want to take John Mark. Why? I believe it's because Paul did not like quitters. Paul did not like people that just... That stopped, Amen. And now, if John still loved the Lord, uh, we know that he's here. He's still in church. He just quit for whatever reason, Amen. Now we shouldn't be quitters, but in the work of the Lord, there may come a time where somebody somebody does fall a little bit short. Maybe they stop doing as much as what they did for the Lord, and that happens. Barnabas was one that he was willing to pick them back up. And, and try to get them back to where they should be. Paul just did not like quitters. And we believe that Paul didn't want to take John Mark because he didn't want to have to deal with him again. But look here in verse 39. It says, And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. These two men that were friends, Barnabas went and found Saul. He helped the church to... He encouraged the church to accept Paul and understand that he was... Uh, that he had really been truly born again. Uh, they taught in Antioch together, uh, helped grow the disciples. They took missionary journeys together. They'd been all over the Roman Empire, starting churches together. All of that, 
And then because Barnabas wanted to take Mark, the contention was so sharp, the Bible says, they departed asunder one from the other. Boy, if, if that doesn't teach you something, in churches, amen, we can get to where at times there can be contention in a local church. Not everybody's going to agree. <laughs> amen. Paul and Barnabas were both men, and there's not two men on the face of the earth, and there's definitely not two Baptist preachers on the face of the earth, I know, that agree, amen, on everything. But the contention was just so sharp that Barnabas left. He took Mark, as you look, and sailed to Cyprus. That's the last that we know of Barnabas. He sailed to Cyprus, and that was the last of his ministry that we know of. And uh, funny, and I just, and just, a, just a, a by the way, Cyprus was where he was from. Uh, I believe that Barnabas wanted to go back to Cyprus to reach his family, reach uh, the, the people he knew. He was from Cyprus, uh, and so I you know, believe that he went back there, wanted to uh, start a church there and, and reach the people that he, you know, his family and the people that he knew, maybe even grew up with. Uh, I don't know if that's where, you know, if he was just born there or if he grew up there, but he went back to Cyprus, and then Paul chose Silas and departed being and uh, went on his missionary journey. And so Paul and Barnabas, they separated, amen, because of contention. And uh, I'm not, I don't believe that it was right for them to do that, but, for, but they, they departed the, 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 because of the contention, amen. But Barnabas t uh, just teaches us that, Unlike Paul, there may be people that do quit. There may be people that do fall short of the ministry. And we've got to be willing to help pick people back up. Amen. And we can't let our contentions between each other, our disagreements between each other, become so sharp that we're willing to depart one from the other. Because, see, Paul and Barnabas, they uh, left on bad terms. And the Bible says that, you know, that as, as brethren, amen, that we're to dwell, uh, dwell with each other, amen, in, in, in peace and not have aught one against another. And uh, this is the good thing, though. I'll show you a verse here. I believe they did get it right. And uh, let me see here. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 1. Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse number 1. Because they did, uh, they did depart uh, and, sh and strive to, from each other. They, uh, they left kind of on bad terms. But Galatians chapter 2, verse number 1, uh, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So I believe they got it right. I believe that eventually Paul and Barnabas, uh, they calmed down. Two men finally came to their senses and said, look, you know, praise the Lord. But we also know, too, because Paul later, he, he, he says to bring Mark with him because he was profitable for the ministry, and I forgot to uh, write that verse down. Um, but you looked at, there's a verse in there. Uh, you can look it up, do some study. That's your challenge for the week, Amen. Find that verse where uh, Paul tells, uh, uh, he tells them to bring Mark with him because he was profitable to him for the ministry. So Barnabas was in this, uh, he was all about taking people and making them profitable, making them uh, to reach their potential for the Lord. So just some lessons to learn from from Barnabas, and uh, these are just some of the verses. Uh, uh, the other verses that you find that mention Barnabas in, in the New Testament are more of just Barnabas working with Paul in his missionary journeys uh, that just mention his name. These are the verses, I believe, that show us Barnabas' character and who he was and what kind of a man he was. Number one, uh, Barnabas was willing to give all to the Lord. He sold his land and gave all that money to the apostles, and he sold his land and went full-time for the Lord. Amen. Barnabas was a good man and he was just willing to give it all. Amen. Uh, there wasn't too much that God could ask of Barnabas. Amen. He went even to sell everything he had to give it to the Lord. Amen. And as Christians, we need to have that kind of a mindset to where we're willing to give everything we have to the Lord. If God would ask us to sell all and up and move, amen. That's what missionaries do. They sell everything they have. They move, go to a foreign country, leave it all, amen. That's what Barnabas was in a way, uh, somewhat of a missionary, give, selling everything he had to travel, amen, and start churches for the Lord, amen. Barnabas was full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, 
Amen. In the work of the Lord, Barnab and, and Barnabas, doesn't, it really doesn't say whether he was as much of a pastor. Paul, we know, was an apostle, but Barnabas was more of just a right-hand man that went and helped start churches and helped encourage people. Amen. Barnabas, it doesn't really say that he pastored a church. Uh, he was just more of a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, that was willing to help the church. Amen. But even laborers in the church, even the laymen need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Barnabas teaches us that we need to not only just as a pastor, or like Paul, just for the apostles, Barnabas wasn't an apostle and wasn't necessarily a pastor, but he was still filled with the Holy Spirit of God in faith. Amen. Anybody can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not reserved to just the apostles. The Holy Spirit is not reserved to just the pastor, not reserved to just the evangelist. The Holy Spirit is for anybody that desires to do a work for God. And if you have a desire to do the work for the Lord and give all to God, then the Holy Spirit has a desire to fill you and use you. Amen. And he was full of faith. We cannot work and do the work of God if we don't have faith. Amen. We have to be full of faith. Faith And now faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I believe that Barnabas spent much time in the Word of God. Amen. Number two, he was willing to be a help to those who others shunned. We saw Acts, uh, you can go back there again, uh, Acts 11.25. We saw this uh, already. I'll read it again. It says, uh, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Uh, and Saul at this time was shunned by the church. They weren't sure what to think of him. They didn't know if he had really been truly born again or if he was just trying to kind of get in. And then you look again, Acts chapter 15, verse number 37. Uh, we saw this again. I'll read it. Uh, and Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. He was willing to help those who others shunned. In the Christian life, there are people that are not going to be as popular or there are not going to be people that are as maybe what, the, what others would consider normal. Amen. And there are people that are shunned by the average Baptist church, I should say. Amen. But Barnabas was willing to take those who everybody else said they're no good and he was willing to take them and help make them profitable for the Lord. Amen. There may be somebody that walks through the back doors of our church that will that we'll think there's no way possible that God can do something with that. But Barnabas had the mindset that it wasn't up to him to change people, that it was up to God. And in our lives, we need to be willing to help those, no matter who walks through the back doors of the church, if they come in, we need to understand that God can do something with them if given the chance even though they may not look the greatest. Maybe they don't smell the greatest. Maybe they don't have the greatest car. Maybe, they don't, maybe, they're, maybe they're a quitter. Maybe they, they're lazy. They fall short. But we've got to be willing to take people where they're at and help them grow to what they could be. Everybody has a potential. Everybody has a plan that God has for them. And Barnabas knew that. Barnabas knew that they could do something. And he was willing to give them a chance to do it. That's what a church is about. We have to be willing to take people that maybe their character is not the greatest. Maybe their hygiene is not the greatest. Maybe their personal and moral lifestyle is not the greatest. But God can change anybody. And we have to be willing to take them where they're at and, make, and allow them a chance to be what God wants them to be. Amen. Also, number three... A lesson I believe we can learn from Barnabas is be firm in what you believe. Amen. Barnabas, uh, he left his a good friend. You know, him and him and Paul were great friends, but he was not about he was not about to be willing to let Paul change his mind on what he knew he was right. I believe that Paul was wrong to not take John Mark with him. We know that because also John Mark later became profitable. So Paul realized later down the road that John Mark was profitable. He just wasn't willing to give him that chance. Barnabas was. But Barnabas was not about to be willing to let Paul change his mind either. He was a good friend. Barnabas loved Paul. 
Barnabas had helped teach Paul, but he was not about to be willing to budge on what he knew was right. In a Christian, we have to be firm in what we believe. We may have friends, we may have family, we may have people that we help even teach and bring to Christ that one day will not agree and will try to change our minds. But we have to be firm and understand we know what we believe and we're not willing to change. We can depart friends. We can still be friends, but we're not going to change. Paul was a man's man. Paul wasn't going to let somebody come in and change his mind. He wasn't going to go with the flow. Well, Paul, I guess if you don't want to, we don't have to. Now he looked Paul straight in the face and said, I don't care if you're an apostle or not. You're wrong. Amen? I'm a pastor, but it doesn't mean I'm always right. <laughs> I have to be willing to understand that there may be a time when somebody looks at me and says, hey, uh, that's, not, that's wrong. Because I'm not perfect. Amen? Now my wife thinks I am. And don't tell her any different. But I'm not perfect. And you're not perfect. There may be a time when somebody has to look you in the eyes and tell you, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You have to be firm in not only knowing what you believe, but also understanding that when somebody does confront you, that you're willing to, you're willing to accept that reproof. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul was an apostle. But Paul was not always right. And Paul was more stubborn and did not want to change because he maybe didn't care for a certain individual where Barnabas was saying, you've got to learn how to treat everybody. Amen. So I believe that we can learn we need to be firm in what we believe. We need to understand what we believe, but we need to also be willing to change when somebody tells us that we're wrong. Amen. You're not always right. Amen. But men, are, men have a hard time with that. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm always right about everything. So, I mean, I'll never have to worry about this point, but, you know, I'm just kidding. But Barnabas was firm in what he believed. Amen. You have to be firm. You may be at work. You may be at your house. You may be, who knows where you're at, but one day somebody will confront you and you'll have to be firm in what you believe. You'll have to have a mind like Barnabas that said the, that the Bible says something different. And that's what I live by. Amen. At this church, there may be somebody that comes and tells, tells us, Well, I'll give you money if you'll change the name on the sign. That's happened. Where somebody said, I'll, they uh, offered a church a large amount of money. And I know the pastor. And they said, If you'll... Change the name, take the name Baptist off. He said, I'll write you a check. And uh, he even wrote the check and handed it to him. And uh, the pastor gave it back to him and said, I'm sorry. God will take care of my needs. He said, but I'm not going to change what I believe. Amen. We have to be that way as a church. We have to know what we believe and when we have to stick by it. And then the last lesson, number four, we need to be willing to forgive. Barnabas was not only willing to forgive those that, like John Mark, that maybe quit and left the work of God, but he was willing to forgive Paul even after great contention, great sharp contention, the Bible says. He left him high and dry, so to speak. But in the book of Galatians, we find that Barnabas still goes with Saul and Titus, uh, or Paul, he goes with Paul and Titus and continues his work for God. Barnabas could have been bitter. Barnabas could have said, Do you know what I've done for you, Paul? You know how much I've invested in you? You know how much time I spent with you? All of those things that Barnabas could have taken and become bitter towards Paul. But I believe that Barnabas was full of the Holy Spirit enough that he was willing to forgive even when they were wrong and did him wrong. In the church, we're not, gonna, we're not all going to be perfect. And we're all going to make mistakes, but we have to be willing to forgive each other. Amen. The pastor's going to make mistakes. The people are going to make mistakes. Maybe we do something that maybe we hurt each other. But a true sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit is willing to forgive. Amen. 
And that's how you know that Barnabas was filled with the Holy Spirit of God because he was not, he was not only willing to do God's work, but he was willing to forgive when wrong was done to him. Amen. There are, a lot of, there are lots of people that are willing to serve God. Amen. But there are not always a lot of people that are willing to forgive like Barnabas when maybe wrong is done to them. They'll work and work and work and work and work in the church. And they'll do anything. But the moment you do something and it hurts their feelings, boy, they're out those back doors like a light. That's like uh, the sower that sows the seed. The Bible says it when he it was on the rock, the stony ground. They grew up, but when persecutions or trials come and the sun beats down, they wither away. Amen. And Barnabas was not that kind of a Christian. Barnabas was the kind that he had a root enough to know that he's not always going to be treated the way he wants to be, but he's still willing to forgive those when they're done wrong. Paul was in the wrong, and they left but he still was willing to forgive. True sign of you being filled with the Holy Spirit of God is if you're willing to forgive. Somebody will do you wrong. Amen. You'll be at this church long enough, you'll find out somebody will hurt your feelings. Amen. Somebody will hurt your wife's feelings. Somebody will hurt your family's feelings. Somebody will hurt your children's feelings. But we have to be willing to forgive. Now we have to be firm. Amen. But we have to be willing to forgive each other. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit is about. If we're not willing to forgive, then can I dare say we're not filled with the Spirit as we should be. Amen. What a great man that Barnabas was. I love to study about Barnabas. And the biggest thing that I believe that we can learn from him is his desire to help people. Amen. He was not a pastor or an apostle. that uh, He was not an apostle and he wasn't a pastor that I know of, but he had a desire to reach people for Christ. Amen. And that's the biggest thing in a church is having that desire to see people grow to their potential. And he was willing to take them and teach them. Amen. And in our church, amen, may there be Barnabases that have a desire and a love for the Lord that want people to grow. Amen. You're going to have to take somebody. Maybe they come through the back doors. You strike up a relationship with them. Maybe there's, there's something that you, know, that you have a connect with them. I don't have a connect with everybody. I try. And uh, some people, you know, I mean, when they're too tall, it's hard to have a connect all the way up there, you know. Get up on a chair, you know, or something. But, you know, you don't. there are some people that you just have a connect with that God gives, for some reason, God allows you and them to connect. Those are people you can help grow. Amen. You can help teach. You can help encourage. But you've got to make sure, like Barnabas, you have to be willing to give your all to the Lord because then you can take a Saul or a John Mark and you can encourage them to do more. But Barnabas couldn't do that if he himself wasn't what he should be. Amen. We have to focus on who we are for Christ and then be willing to help others reach that potential. Amen. So let's be focused on that. Be a Barnabas. Amen. Now, there's we have 15 minutes and there is a uh, a cinnamon roll cake back there. Amen. With coffee. You can't argue with that. Amen. So let's pray and uh, and we'll uh, be dismissed and get ready for the morning service. Heavenly Father, we sure do.